Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. It's 2020, I'm back from vacation, so that means it's time to start training again. To start things off, I'm challenging myself with a month of fingerboard or hangboard training. And instead of me just doing the video and showing you the results and everything that I went through, I thought it'd be interesting to tell you guys I'm doing it beforehand, so if anyone out there wanted to join along, you could do the same thing that I'm doing and then we can compare results after. Up next is a conversation I had with Dave McLeod where I asked all my questions to get started for the month. So check that out and it should give you enough to build out your plan for the next month. But if you wanna wait to see my results, you can do that too. At the end of the month, I'll share my calendar and my whole plan of what I did on each day how it felt and how it went. But for now, here's my conversation with Dave McLeod to get me started for the month of training. I'm here today with Dave McLeod, professional climber, trainer, coach. When he's not outside climbing everything in Scotland, he's at home researching journals and papers and articles to make himself and other people better climbers. There's one thing you told me about progress in your climbing, which was the difference that using a hangboard or fingerboard made in your climbing. And I remember that it's stuck with me ever since we filmed in the summertime. We did some great videos too, by the way, you can go check those out. But it stuck with me and I've been meaning to do a challenge like this where I focus on fingerboard training for a solid month. I've got one of your custom boards here at home to use. And now's the time. Season's changing here. I'm getting ramped up again to go outside and start doing some hard projects. And I'm ready to get on the fingerboard. I'm ready to do a month of training. So for those of you, I've been talking a lot right now, but for those of you who haven't seen, Dave has an amazing, amazing video on how to hang board. I was just mentioning, I've watched it probably three or four times now, very informative. And I'm here with Dave today to check in on how do I start off? For the next month. First off, have you ever done anything like this? Have you fingerboarded for a long period or do you do it in sections or how would you usually approach fingerboarding? Uh, to be honest, uh, when I when I started fingerboarding, which must have been in 2005, um, I've, I've kind of done it very regularly ever since. Uh, so, I mean, I just had a, a step change in my climbing ability. Um, and then I, I've, because that was so fundamental, I, I you know, it's one of the few times in my life where I was like, oh, I've actually moved the needle, like I've really made a jump. So I knew that I, I should just keep doing it. So the only time that I'm not doing it is really when the weather's good. If, if I'm not out climbing all the time, which is periods in the year, then I do try and fingerboard, you know, do some sort of amount of fingerboarding in almost every training session I do, just because your fingers can never be strong enough. And it's, it's, such, a, it's such a basic tool and as long as you get a few basics right, it's such a safe tool to use. So it's really a brilliant thing to do. So this is something that anybody at any level could pretty much hop on as long as you're on a hold that's not going to put your tendons at risk. Is yeah, it, exactly. It's pretty much safe for anyone. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a, a resistance training method. So if you think about the equivalent of going to a gym, you know, you just you just pick up the weight and move it as you know from where you are, like what level you can handle. You know, you might not feel very comfortable on a or a very small fingery hold, but a medium sized hold or even a jug will be absolutely fine. And you know, most most commercial fingerboards have you know varying sizes of holds, so you can start from where you are and go from there. And there's no need to actually use really tiny fingery holds for for most people most of the time. A kind of medium sized hold that you 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 do something really powerful on, it's still like, you know, that sort of 20, 20, around 20 mil size is a really nice size. And that's, yeah. you know, I still only really use the middle rung on my edge board, which I think is 21 mil, but it's quite rounded at the edge because it's a, it's a really nice size. I mean, it's convenient for me because I can just one one arm it on the different <laughs> types. <laughs> Which, that's my goal. Will I get that after 30 days? <laughs> Uh, well, that was one of the things I was going to say to you, actually, because, um, I mean, 30 days, it's a great experiment to do to just see what difference it makes to you. I mean, it, it depends on, on who you are and what level you're at. It'd be very interesting to see what changes you see on the fingerboard in 30 days, because my experience when I started climbing, so when I started fingerboarding, I was maybe doing about V10, maybe a few V11s, and when I started fingerboarding, the first six weeks I had quite rapid gains because I hadn't really done it before. Mm -hmm. And quite rapid gains on the fingerboard. 
and then I carried it on for maybe three or four months, right through a whole summer. And after that first six weeks, I felt like I was completely plateaued on the fingerboard. I didn't have any noticeable gains. But when I went back to my projects in the autumn, wow, did I notice a difference. Really? <laughs> yeah, well, wow. so I, I'd climbed like on sport routes, I'd climbed like maybe one or two AB pluses, but it took me weeks. And I could do like an AB in a couple of weeks or something like that. Yeah. And I was trying to do an AC. And I, I, I'd been trying one the whole winter. And I'd... I had it totally dialed and I just wasn't strong enough and I eventually realized that. And that's what kind of made me think I'll change tack in my training and I'll try the fingerboarding. And when I came back to it on the first session in October, when the cool conditions came, I pulled on it like the second move and I just climbed to the top first try. Wow. And it, like I was I just remember like sitting on the on the rope at the top going, Oh my god, like I've just totally changed the game, you know? And so uh, that season I did my first 8Cs, my first B13s, and the following year I did my first E11. So okay, like, I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting today. Okay, as far as an experiment goes, I was thinking I go to the gym, I can hold on the, all the rungs right now at, at some degree with two hands. Yes. Um, I was thinking I put weight on myself, I did something similar with the lattice test, I just pick an edge and I make sure at the end of the month I use the same edge and yeah. just try to use equivalent weight or see if there's any gains on it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and I think it's it's worth paying a bit of attention to trying to control other aspects of the conditions. Like yeah, rest? Think, yeah, my performance varies a, a fair bit, a, no, a noticeable amount depending on whether it's like hotter or cooler. Mm -hmm. um, or whether you're rested and it, it might even be a good idea to um, take a few measurements in a few different sessions you could okay. even like take the mean of those so yep. that's a, a good way to do it because that will control for that variability yeah uh, yeah but I mean if there's, if there's a noticeable change then you should you should see it I mean I, I think my null hypothesis would be that your your gains will be small in 30 days just because 30 days is not a long time <laughs> right yeah okay but yeah. but it just depends like uh, I mean, I don't really have a sense of exactly what sort of activities your your training is made up of. You know, it, it may be that you haven't, if the types of problems you're climbing on are quite compression-y, you know, classic modern indoor boulder problems, there are lots of big slopers and compression and things like that, then your strength on really fingery edges could be a bit lacking. So you could see a, a big benefit in 30 days. Or if you're used to climbing on a lot of small holes. I mean, one thing I was going to ask you was when you went to Magic Wood recently. Yeah. Um, I know that the 7C that you climbed, because I've done it myself, is yeah. very much of that style. It's like, you know, it's full body power compression. on, yeah. And it's like just one big hole, isn't it? That big. Yeah, one big arete. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get on on the, the really fingery problems there? Dave, you just described my climbing to a T because <laughs> there's there's a there's an eight B plus we are trying Hohenrausch, and yep. it's pretty good crimps, but the crux move is on a very very small crimp, um, yep. and I I do struggle on these smaller holds. Mm -hmm. So my natural inclination is to go to these more compression, um, like yeah. you know. Bigger, bigger pinchy holds. I prefer that. I know I'm I'm weaker on on the smaller stuff, and I see it at the gym too. Like I'll shy away from those climbs sometimes, but I know it's time. Like I need to work on those weaknesses. So I'm hoping to see a big difference, even if it's small, even if it's something, even if it's just a little bit of how I feel on those climbs after the 30 days yeah. will be something. But you 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 definitely nailed it. The that was that climb because it was at my like top limit it was definitely my style of climb yes and i wouldn't feel as confident on a v9 that was like small crimp right. stuff yeah that's interesting well i mean that would predict that you would you'd be more likely that you would see a noticeable gain in in a month and um, i mean my uh, my sort of profile if you like is almost the opposite of that <laughs> the compression stuff is my weakness and um, so i've been spending a lot of time in glasgow because i've been studying over the past mm. few weeks so going to the big commercial climbing walls uh, down there, you know, everything's compression, big slopers, and, and quite athletic kind of jumping around. I'm, that's my weakness because I'm not exposed to it that much. I primar primarily climb 
on Scottish rock, which is all small print. Yeah. And so my board kind of echoes that. That's what I need to be good at. So whenever I go to those walls, I try and do the, the slopey stuff because I'm, I'm weak on it. It's a great opportunity to attack that weakness. And it sounds mm-hmm. like for you, maybe it's the opposite. Yeah. And I know it's really helpful for outdoor climbing. I'm not going for competition stuff. It's fun to to jump around sometimes on the climb in the gym, but there's also that like voice in the back of my head that's like, well, uh, using my sessions, one, it's good to have fun in your session, but two, I want to be working towards those outdoor goals that I have. And I know, I know that that, that finger strength is super, very key. Are you yeah, aware so. of um, differences in your strength across the different grip types? Open hand versus crimp. Yeah, so there again, I am uh, open hand. I am a lot stronger. The the crimp grip is is weaker. Uh, when I did the lattice test, they saw that too, right. and they recommended I, I work on the different grip types to to kind of even that out. And that's actually something I wanted to ask you about um, because I do fairly well with two hands uh, on an open grip. Yeah. When I'm training over the next month for strength, I know from. From your video, that's important to keep it within like the seven to ten second max pushing. Well, I think so anyway, yeah, I think so. I could also be working on these different grip types. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, and the fingerboard is a great way to do that because you're so separated from the 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 desire to climb well. <laughs> it's pure <laughs> strength training, so um, you know you can separate your, yourself from the the kind of enjoyment of like doing something well. <laughs> <laughs> and you can actually turn that on its head and think, oh, if I'm really, if I feel weak on the, the crimp, then you can focus, you know, just shift the volume a wee bit in favor of doing that. And then you hopefully take pleasure in seeing the improvement on it, on such a basic exercise. I mean, you know the video that I did on, on how to hangboard? Yeah. A, a, a big, well, I guess the main purpose of that was just a kind of demystifier for people. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's a low tech <laughs> you know, it's just it's just lifting yourself against you know it's just applying force on on a, on an edge. It's like it's not rocket science. No, uh, yeah. I was kind of aware that some people don't use the fingerboard because they, they feel like they don't know how to, and there's really not much to it. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, with all training, there's you're going to get like eighty percent of the results with just a very very basic approach. And maybe for the people who are super advanced to squeeze out that last few percentage points of improvement, then you can start to play, with, like observe things and start to play with the variables to see if you can get any more improvement out of it. But just going from not using it to using it. <laughs> is huge. Because <laughs> a lot of people will be like me who work at a computer all day and that extra effort that you're putting in just adds up won't help the technique but it will help those other aspects of climbing yeah i mean an ob- just a casual observation that i've made from coaching climbers is that when you're you've got a group of climbers um, and you see someone who you can sort of tell from their technique that they don't necessarily spend huge amounts of time climbing because their technique's not super advanced but yeah. they just look strong, like they just got strong bodies. And I always think, what do you what do you do for a job? And they invariably say, I'm a joiner or I'm a builder, or they have yeah. some physical job. Yeah. And they're stronger. Yeah. Look at science. <laughs> that that run that reminds me of a mate of mine. He's a stonemason, brought him yeah. climbing for the first time, had no clue what he was doing. He grabbed a foothold, and this is this dude is over 200 pounds of just muscle, and he just held on to the foothold and blew my mind but amazing yeah. grip strength yeah yeah I, I have a similar story because um uh, one of my best friends who i started climbing with at school uh, he's a stonemason and he yeah. lets uh, polished granite gravestones around all day yeah uh, i when i left school i did a, a year uh, not a year a summer working with him and at the end of the day one day he said right dave let's do some pull-ups and I said, yeah, where are we going to do some pull-ups? And he said, oh, I just off the rafters in, in, his, in his workshop, you know. Yeah. So he jumped up to the, the, the wooden rafters and pinched them and knocked no. out 10 pull-ups. No way. Like, that must be, must, must be quite grippy. And I, <laughs> I, I jumped up and just went, <laughs> I couldn't hold it for a nanosecond. <laughs> and like, you know, at that point, I could climb B10. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I think he'd almost stopped climbing by then. So yeah, I, it was a real, that was one of a clear lesson. Yeah. <laughs> For my scheduling throughout the week, mm-hmm. I know that everybody's different. So I'm going to be kind of, 
I, I think I'm going to be looking at the first week as an exploration to see what I can do. Mm -hmm. And from hearing what you've said before, it's important to know that I'm having uh, efficient workouts that are using the, that maximum force. So if I start to see a decrease in performance, it kind of is indication that I'm not rested enough and it's not necessarily helping as much. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that is, that is fair. I think, yeah, it's a, it's a focus on quality. Uh, okay. So to an extent, less is more with the, the fingerboard. Um, and you're, you know, the sort of time under load for a session is so small um, mm. that you can, you can afford to do it quite frequently. So you can, you know, if you've got a, a rest day, you can do just, especially if, you're, if it's in your house, you can do just a few hangs, you know, literally 10, 15 minutes uh, total workout time. Yeah. And so you can schedule it that way, or you can do bigger workouts uh, interspersed with the odd rest day. I, 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 I'm not totally certain which way would give better strength gains. My, my feeling would be that the, the difference would be not that much. Okay. Um, and uh, the doing something that fits better into your schedule is going to be is going to just work better, really. I wouldn't I wouldn't sweat the the details too much. Um, okay. I think your your idea of having a week where you kind of pl play with it and mm -hmm. and just see what what feels right is yeah. is, a good, is a good way to do it. Okay. Could I mix days where and maybe I'm overthinking it now, but could I mix days where I'm I'm thinking of mixing days where I'm at the gym using a like a weighted system and then other days where I'm just at home dropping fingers, different grip strengths. I may be able to hold it longer, but um, still just keep activating those finger tendons and the and the muscles to help them grow. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Uh, I think that the key thing is that whatever you're whatever wherever you're doing the workout and whatever setup you're using. That you're trying really hard to, to hold okay. on. just hold on. Just keep trying hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a big part of um, of strength, you know, strength obviously is dependent on uh, the, the actual size of the muscle that's doing the pulling. Um, but a lot of the the other side of strength, which is getting the muscle fibers to fire at yeah. all, just getting those type two fibers to fire, um, is is motivation. It's a, it's a learned technique. That I think that is part of the skill is learning to just not let go just like really, really hold on super hard maybe even the most important thing to think about aside from the basic safety of the exercise is just like getting psyched up enough for the effort it's only a few seconds of effort but it's amazing the difference if you really take a second to stand there underneath the fingerboard and go i'm gonna really really pull yeah yeah <laughs> and then you just it's amazing how you just do pull that a little bit harder it's, it's the same you know if you're on a boulder problem and you've almost sent it and your friends are there going, come on! Yeah. You see that extra percent. So you're trying to recreate that as much as possible in the training. That is what I was thinking about as you were describing that. I feel like sometimes I'm even in a gym and I'm on a climb in the gym and I kind of half-ass it. But then I go outside and I, I feel like there's that extra motivation or something that kind of helps you dig deep. Yeah. So this is a, that's actually really great practice. Then again, is learning how to give that extra effort on a day to day basis. Because when I see guys like you or or other pros that I filmed with, I I feel like I see it every single time I'm I'm filming with them. That mm -hmm. ability to to just go and push to these seemingly uncomfortable points where most people would just say, "Now that's it. I'm good. <laughs> that's enough for me." Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It now feels uncomfortable, but that's how you that's how you get those that next stage, how you, how you get that next level. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to learn how to try hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do. I mean, and it's something that um, it's it's kind of it's, it's like hard to it's put into words and it's it's hard to to say how would you go about training that? I, I, but I think awareness of it is a big part of it. If you're aware that that is a trainable skill like any other then you got a long way to noticing whether you really are trying hard and, and just building that, that habit of, did, of squeezing that last few percent every time. Did you have a, con did, did you have a conscious shift when, in your climbing that you, you, you suddenly noticed yourself putting in that extra effort constantly or putting yourself, was it a gradual shift into becoming more used to those scenarios and getting comfortable with that? Yeah, I think it was kind of gradual. I, I do think there's that that is one thing that I, I I brought to my climbing inherently. Like I was kind of uh, I noticed that I'm 
I'm able to do it, and I'm able to do it in other areas as well. Yeah. Um, outside of climbing or outside of sport. Uh, so maybe there's, a, there's an inherent thing there that um, I, I realized quite early on that I had that as a strength and I just leveraged it. And so it helped me to, to get improvements out of my training. So it improves the training efficiency so that per unit training, you get more gain because that, that training time just was a stronger stimulus. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, for anyone watching, Dave McLeod has designed an amazing fingerboard called The Edge. It's on your website. I think when I last checked, it was sold out, but maybe you guys have more <laughs> stuff coming through. They're, uh, they're so popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they kind of struggle to make enough. We are about to get a huge pile of them very, very shortly. I think yeah. in a week, or, a week or two or something like that. And it's sustainably sourced in the Highlands and manufactured in the UK or yeah. up, in, up in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. The, so the trees are... The trees are all from our various spots around Scotland. We but, drove past yeah. them on our yeah, way up there right. in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, they, they make them in Edinburgh. I, I love this board. One thing that you pointed out to me that I hadn't thought about before is, well, there's no pockets on it. But yeah. one thing people should look out for when they're using a board with pockets is not to wedge your finger, unless you're training pockets, but not to wedge your finger on the borders or the sides because you're actually uh, assisting yourself in a way um, by by using that, and I think you mentioned that you used to to do that. So you tr you designed a board that's just a, a straight edge. Yeah, I, I just like the open the open rung. I mean, there's a couple of reasons. Like one is that yeah, when you when you nestle your fingers into the corners of of the pockets, then that it does it does give you a bit more uh, friction, a bit more advantage. I mean, not that that's super important on the training, but I just prefer like that kind of basic ability to measure on a on an open rung. But also like my I noticed that my index finger joints are beginning to become a bit twisted. I mean, I, I, really? I, I'm climbing for a quarter of a century. It's a long time. <laughs> um, uh, and I did kind of wonder if uh, maybe that, like doing that volume of really high load training could be contributing to that. I, I have no idea if that's true or not, but yeah. I just thought, hmm, maybe I should, I should train on an open rung just to make sure that um, I, I avoid that if it, if it is contributing. Yeah, 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 and also like my first fingerboard was just a single campus rung, yeah, four quid or something like that, um, and that that got me to my first E11. So yeah, <laughs> it was just like one campus rung and the door frame. That was all I had. Could be as simple as that. Yeah, super simple. Um, Dave, thanks for joining me today. I look forward to to messaging you and telling you how well I did after this month. I <laughs> hope it's good. I'm news. Strong guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, one thing I was going to say before we go is, um, as well as the outcome measure on the fingerboard itself, uh, do you think you'll get the opportunity to give a, a kind of casual test, if you like, on an actual project? Because I, I have a feeling that that might give a more noticeable result in that short time period. Yeah, there's it might. I'm going to see how my schedule is for the next month or so. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if I'm able to travel. There is... One nice thing about the, the Vox gym that I train at is there's permaset climbs. Oh, yes, yes. I've there's, done some of them, actually. You've, yeah. done, you've done some of them. Yeah. There's one actual, there's one difficult V7 that's very small rails, um, and I haven't done to this point. Yeah. That could be an interesting one to look at a before and after on an actual yeah. climb. And if I do get outside, I mean, of course, I'd love to get back up to North Wales to try and try and get on the... Uh, Lou Ferrino, which I wanted to do. And there might be another trip outdoors uh, to Font next month, hopefully, Fantastic. which would be a great test. Yeah, but yeah. one thing I can do for sure is is test out that V7 crimpy one that I wasn't able to do before yeah. and, and, and see that before and after. That would be nice. That would be good. Yeah. Oh, well, well but good luck. I hope you get one. <laughs> okay. Luck. I'm excited. I'm going to go attack this this edge. Thanks for your help. Everybody go check out Dave's channel. I'll link it at the end and I'll link to his site where you can go check out the board. New ones coming through. Hopefully by the time I'm done the video, they'll, they'll be out for you guys to, to go check out. And thanks. Thanks, sir. Thanks for coming on.
Great, good stuff, good luck. I gotta thank Dave again for sitting down and talking with me, help me set that up. I hope that you guys are inspired to go do some fingerboard training, build some strong fingers. Just so everyone out there knows if you're gonna do this yourself, at home, I'll be training on Dave's board, the, the Edge, which I'll link to below. And at the gym, I'm gonna be using the Beastmaker 1000 series, the bottom outer rung. So if anybody wants to compare, that's what I'm using. That's gonna be my benchmark test with the, with the weight and everything. And I'm gonna test the open hand grip and the half crimp. Throughout the month, I'm gonna be using the half crimp position, so trying to keep my fingers at a 90 degree. And at home, I'm not gonna be using weight, but I might try dropping fingers or using the smallest rail if I can, depending on how I feel. So, Finger Strength Month challenge starts now. Wish me luck, and good luck to anybody else out there who's gonna do this. If you do do it, tag me in an Instagram post or something. It'd be cool to see who else is going through the challenge. Misery enjoys company, right? Good luck. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.